What is good, everybody? Today we are diving into My Damn Thoughts on WWE Elite Series 109, and you may be wondering what the hell My Damn Thoughts is. Well, it's basically where we take any specific WWE Elite action figure wave or AEW Unrivaled Unmatched wave and break down my thoughts on the entire thing. I'll give you the lore of the wave, we'll break down some different categories, we'll crown some champions in here, we'll rank the set from worst to best, and give you every single detail of this set and break down what all my thoughts are on it. So that being said, man, we do have My Damn Thoughts, and we always start off My Damn Thoughts with my first thoughts when we first saw this wave. Now, this wave is very intriguing, actually, because we didn't get to see this wave until we were actually in person at WrestleMania 40 at the Superstore. We didn't know what this wave looked like. We didn't know what the... Like, we saw some renders. We didn't see everything. We didn't know we were getting a suited Cody. All these different things. And then, bam, they dropped it on us. And so, my first thoughts were pretty good. You know, I like to see it in person. I thought it was pretty cool. You can kind of see my first thoughts on the channel. If you go to my first day at the Superstore, we break down all these figures, and I kind of give you all of my thoughts right there in it, man, but my first thoughts were solid, and I know this jacket doesn't come with Rollins, but we're gonna live with it. It looks better on there than without it, and the sunglasses. It, 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 the guy didn't come with nothing, but my first thoughts were very solid. It's a very solid wave of figures overall, and after all of our reviews have been completed here, I still like the wave. I think it holds up. It's definitely better than Elite 108, for sure. Now we're getting into who I think the shelf warmer in the set is, and unfortunately, it is gonna be Bailey here. I just think that the rest of the set is pretty damn good, and it's it's a bunch of superstars that people are gonna want, so I think Bailey is the show former. If she had the championship, it would have helped her case, but it is a damage control Bailey. She's not even in damage control anymore, and she does have basic feet and stuff, which doesn't really contribute to it shelf forming. Women's figures just don't perform as well at retail shelves as the men's figures. It's just kind of a fact. Depending on the character, obviously there are exceptions to that rule, but that does seem to be the case most of the time. And her Survivor Series Elite did shelf form quite a bit, so I am going based off those different factors there. In terms of the opposite of that, the hottest figure in the set, I personally feel that it will be the Seth Rollins. Now, it's not particularly because the Seth Rollins is just the greatest figure you've ever seen. You know, he doesn't come with this jacket. He doesn't come with these sunglasses. I put that on there myself, but he does come with something that I think a lot of people are going to want, and that is going to be the new World Heavyweight Championship. When people see this on the shelf, it is over. They're grabbing this. This is the first time we've seen this in the line. This is going to be the first figure out on retail shelves, to my knowledge. I don't think any of the basics of the battle packs will come out with the championship. I think there's one championship showdown pack coming with this title belt, and I don't think that's going to make it to retail before this Elite does, or if they do, they'll make it around the same time, but you're going to buy the belt. They want the belt, they're going to want the belt, and that's going to make this Rollins the hottest figure in the set. It's just the way of the world, man. It's the way of the land. That's what's going to take place. Seth Rollins will be the hottest figure in the set for that reason, and outside of that, you might could say Cody. You know, a lot of people love Cody Rhodes, right? Very hot seller, and then Damian Priest being world champion but how do you get how do you get the world championship he's supposed to come with you gotta buy the Rollins so the Rollins there it goes it comes back full circle now in terms of the chase variant in this set not my favorite chase variant you know I mean we kind of have like a NWO and a Wolfpack NWO deal going on Shinsuke Nakamura is the chase variant in the set in the black and white here I like the Shinsuke a lot actually it actually was one of the figures that quite shocked me a lot I was not you know, I was blown away by it in hand in the review. If you guys missed the review from that yesterday, definitely go check that out. Damn good figure there. But you know, the Chase variant is in the black and red. It's solid. I'll definitely try and find it at retail. Anytime I find a Chase at retail, I do purchase it. That's kind of how I do things with the Chase figures. But Shinsuke Nakamura is our Chase on the set. But he's an underrated one here, man. I think he's kind of slept on. Now we're getting into the best head sculpt in this set. Now, usually when I name the best head sculpt, I also break down why other figures didn't win this specific category. Category. And from left to right, this Cody Rhodes wasn't going to get it. We've seen this head sculpt so many damn times. Dominic was basically an ha a hair extension, so it's basically a head sculpt we've already seen. Same with Rollins, definitely not going to win. Even though they are solid head sculpts, I don't really care for the Cody one. They're all solid head sculpts in their own right. I just don't think that, you know, they're, they're not going to be better than the rest. And then Bailey here, I do like the new Bailey head sculpt. I still think that her face looks at, there's something off about the paint amount they put in the eyes, I think, that kind of throws it off. So it kind of came down to Shinsuke Nakamura and Damian Priest, and at the end of the day, I went with Damian Priest. I like this Damian Priest head sculpt, man. I like it a lot. I, I think it looks just like him, and the Shinsuke Nakamura is good as well, but I think there's a little bit of paint missing on one of my, uh, on a little bit on my Shinsuke Nakamura, so I went with the Damian Priest. I like the Damian Priest. Best head sculpt in the set to, to me, in, in my personal opinion there, I went with Damian Priest. In terms of best, we're moving on to the best articulation. Now, this one was kind of difficult, because a lot of these guys have good articulation, and they're all on ball joints, so you have a a lot of good articulation in this set, a lot of great figures that pose around well, but at the end of the day, 
the one that I would personally like to do a match with the most. And for me, man, it's going to be, oh, Bailey, no. It's going to be the Cody Rhodes figure, man. It has the best articulation. I know that it has these ugly legs and he is in a suit, but he's very buttery smooth. He can kick forward all the way, man. Like, look at that right there. 90 degrees there and 90 degrees back because he has these ugly legs. I mean, they are ugly. They don't look great with all these lines in them, but I mean, he can do everything. Like, look at this right here, man. He's going to be able to do anything you need because his legs are that way. And you know what? That's pretty damn good. That's pretty damn good. I, I think that, you know, between him, I mean, the Shinsuke feels great in hand. The Damian Priest is great. The Dominic can pose around. The Seth Rollins is obviously very good. So, there's a lot of figures that can pose around nice, but at the end of the day, I think the Cody figure poses around the best, and so, that is my knowledge there with the uh, the best articulation. It is going to be the Cody Rhodes figure, man. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Now, in terms of the worst articulation, for the most part, man, I mean, I just went over all the figures having good articulation, but Bailey is going to be the one with the worst articulation women's figures don't have a good diaphragm and they also uh, they've gotten away from this they've gotten better on the shoulders but for me it's all about these basic feet man the basic feet they're going to be easier to fall over she doesn't have any ankle rocker or anything like that and in terms of posing i think the figure i'd least like to fed with or do a you know a, a matchup with would probably be the bailey figure but that's not to say it's just the worst articulation ever they have come miles and miles better than women's figures used to be man so bailey is the worst articulation but i don't think it really speaks to it because it's still a damn good one. I mean, the thing is, man, is something has to come in at the bottom, right? Something has to be last, and unfortunately, it is Bailey in this situation. Now, we're getting into the best accessory in our set. Now, the best accessory was very tough, but at the end of the day, I did go with the New World Championship, and the reason I went with the New World Championship is because it is the first time in the line that we've seen it. I think that it's going to be highly sought after, but I do want to give credit where credit is due. I like the flannel with Dominic, and I love the entrance coat that does come with Shinsuke Nakamura. That entrance robe is damn nice, and it definitely deserves some flowers. A very good piece. I, I actually almost gave it to this thing, but I thought that, you know, the championship is the championship. I think a lot of people are going to be wanting that championship, and so I did, uh, I put it as a championship, but it was very close. I did want to, you know, make an honorable mention to the Shinsuke coat, because the Shinsuke coat is damn nice, but that is all of our categories, man. Now we're running into our ranking of this set, and to do so, we are going to remove these guys from the screen and we're going to break down our criteria for ranking this set and explain to you why these figures are coming in at where they're coming in. So obviously just because a figure comes in at number six doesn't mean it's the worst figure of all time and it doesn't have any good things about it and I just hate the figure and whatever. And just because a figure's number one doesn't mean that it's without flaws and it's just the greatest figure of all time. And then we have our other criteria like excitement level for the figure, how the figure feels in hand, the details and the execution of those details, likeness to the character on my television, head sculpt, accessories, all of these things play roles, but that is the criteria for the ranking. Now let's shut the hell up and get into it, man. Starting out at the bottom, probably doesn't shock a lot of people. I went with Bailey at number six. It's a damn good Bailey figure and the best Bailey we've ever seen from Mattel. It really is great, but I think that she was up in a wave that was very strong, and that's unfortunate for her. I don't like the basic boots, but everything else I pretty much like. I do like the Bailey a lot, but unfortunately, she comes in at the bottom of the ranking. The rest of the set was pretty difficult to rank, but it wasn't It wasn't the hardest thing of all time, man. Number five is going to be Dominic Mysterio. Now, if this shocks you, well, Brad, consider yourself shocked, I guess. But for me personally, this figure was not a ton different from his Elite 105. I mean, it, it was a good update. It, it is nice. I like the added accessories. I like the flannel. But I don't like that the shirt's blank, the tights are virtually the same, the kick pads are virtually the same, all the tattoos, the wrist tape, it's pretty much the same, but the flannel shirt was enough to put it over the Bailey. and if I didn't enjoy Dominic's work that I've been, you know, really liking under this, you know, the, the thug Dominic era, I probably would have knocked it below Bailey. but I was hyped to get that flannel shirt in this updated version of Dominic, but he did not beat out the rest of the figures in the set. Coming in at number four, this might shock a few people, Brad. But I went with the Cody Rhodes. I know, I know, I, I know it's crazy, but just hear me out. I love Cody Rhodes, no shocker there. I don't like that they keep repeating his head sculpt. I don't like how flat the figure is. I also feel like the figure is a little too short. Just the gray tones of this, it's just a very, it's a, it's a Cody in suit, but it's kind of a lifeless Cody in suit. They could have really done a lot of cool things here. And while I love Cody, there was ways to upgrade this figure. 
and uh, I just think that the rest of the figures in the wave are better at the end of the day. They just are. Even though I love Cody and I love his figures and I love suited figures, I think the figure could have been just way better than this one was. So there is that. Coming in at number three, I went with Shinsuke Nakamura. This figure really shocked the hell out of me. I was really blown away by the Shinsuke. The feel in hand, the cloth goods, the posability, the likeness. Just a very strong Shinsuke. A very strong Shinsuke. And you can kind of see that height played out with Cody right there, man. I mean, look at the differences that's going on there between Dominic, between Shinsuke. Kind of solidifies what we were talking about there. So, yeah, the Shinsuke Nakamura figure is really damn good, man. But let's get into number two and number one. And for me personally, it was a tight race. But at the end of the day, I went with Damian Priest at number two. And I went with Seth Rollins at at number one. No shocker there. Really enjoy the Seth Rollins figure. You get the new title, the new formula with a new gear. I know that he didn't come with this jacket, man, but throwing that jacket on there kind of adds to the incentive of the figure. You know, being able to fix a figure up and really make it. But even if you take the jacket off, I still like it better than the Damian Priest figure. And the Damian Priest is very good. I like the Damian Priest a lot. I love the sculpts. I love the head sculpt. Damian Priest figures are amazing with the sculpts and everything. And a lot of people may have that as number one, but I have Seth Rollins at number one. And I think that it's a damn good piece, man. So that is my ranking of WWE Elite Series 109. But down in the comment section below, I'd like to know what your ranking is of this set. How do you feel about this set overall? Did you think it was a good set? I would love to know all your things down below, man. But I think that is going to wrap up our My Damn Thoughts episode on WWE Elite 109. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know where you stand down below. Of course, you can grab these figures or ringside collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. But that is pretty much going to wrap the video, man. Huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT channel, man. Thank you guys so very much for all you do, man. Every single time. I, I say it every day because I mean it every day. But thank you guys so very much for all that you guys do. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys next time, man. Have a blessed one. I'll see you guys later. Peace.